President Raisi told us that Iran will use the $6 billion according to its needs. He told us this deal could lead to other agreements, such as on the nuclear issue, but that Iran does not trust the United States, and that's because the U.S. did withdraw from the nuclear accord in 2018. But he also said that this Trump. exchange could be a step toward future humanitarian gestures. Ah, yes, Iran and their famous humanitarian programs, usually involving car bomb suicide attacks and killing Jews. They use the words, but they don't know what they mean. Andrea Mitchell at NBC Fake News. Yeah, Iran and their famous humanitarian efforts. That's what they're known for. Occasionally, they hang a gay man from a crane in a town square while everyone chants Allahu Akbar. Pay no attention to that. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. Now, there is a, uh, I was just talking about this clown, Hassan Minaj, who was on uh, Comedy Central, not funny, Daily Show, not funny. And his comedy is often based on his identity as an Indian Muslim American. And you'll never guess, it's all anti-American and anti-white. And uh, he's a victim. And the police are bad. And everybody's mean in this country. And now it turns out he did a long interview for the New Yorker magazine. And it turns out, well, you know, I, I, a lot of it is it's hyperbole, it's exaggeration, it's fiction. Those are his words. Hyperbole, exaggeration, fiction. And he goes around talking about how, oh, everywhere I go, you awful white people in America are mean to me because I'm a, the son of Indian immigrants, you know, a biochemist and a doctor and and as parents being oppressed here in the United States. And, and he, was, he was born in California and uh, went to UC Davis and has had a real rough uh, go of things here. And he goes around whining because he knows that's what the left needs to nourish them, the anti-American, racially polarizing stuff and the anti-police stuff. And, oh, yeah, he's thrown under the hood of a police car. But um, no, no, mm-mm-mm. no. That's not the thing. And he was picked by the left to be the White House Correspondents Dinner comedian uh, several years ago, a couple of years ago. And the Wuhan came along. So he had some Wuhan issues. Is that right? Had the, because uh, that Wuhan. Yeah, and the police, uh, real mean to him, except, well, wait, that stuff never really happened. You know, don't worry about that because it didn't happen. But that's because. He needs to be a victim because the left loves victimhood and victimization. The most exalted status for a leftist is that of victim. And uh, really, your standing rises when you're a victim. And if you're not a victim, this is, as Michael Piercy and I were discussing this a little earlier today, this is the old supply and demand problem. He wants to be treated poorly, and he isn't, so he has to make it up because he's a pathetic loser and a clown, and he wants to be a victim. It's like Juicy Smoulet, right? Juicy Smoulet so desired the status of victim that he had to make up, you know, this mega country. Yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning, downtown Chicago, 20 degrees below zero, wind howling off the lake. You're out getting a Subway sandwich with a noose around your own neck that you tied yourself And, uh, yeah, guys wearing MAGA hats because that's what you wear when it's 20 degrees below zero in Chicago at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, yeah, this MAGA country, uh, expletive deleted, sure, that's about, that's, that's, that's juicy, all right? And now this guy is, this is the Juicy Smoulet card. It is. Hassan Minaj. And what a pathetic loser. You just, uh, okay, your parents are like, you know, a biochemist and a medical doctor. You go to UC Davis, University of California at Davis. You're born in California. Um, You have every advantage in the world, and you spend your life making up stuff about being a victim in America. I know he was born here, but he should be deported anyway. Just deport him. Kick him out. Making stuff up all over the place. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Talks about how he was mailed anthrax, and uh, you know the the uh, because the anthrax was sent to him because he spoke up on behalf of Jamal Khashoggi, 
who was murdered by Muslims, by the way, but never mind that, chopped into pieces and put in suitcases because a lot of that goes on in certain parts of the world. Simply made the story up about the anthrax being sent to him, right? He was not rejected at his high school prom because of his race, you know, because a white girl rejected him, the high school prom, because he's a an Indian Muslim American born in the United States uh, to well-to-do parents. Yeah, and, and he tells these stories. He has stand-up specials and Netflix, and, and everybody loves him because he's a victim, right? So it turns out that uh, he wasn't rejected because of his race, but says that the girl just... He asked a girl and said she wasn't interested in him, in him and turned him down. But then he turned it into a story about how everybody's racist and he's a victim, right? Sure. The New Yorker magazine actually found the girl, said, no, that's, that's not at all what happened. That's the thing. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And he, uh, there was a breaking point for him re-examining the consequences. There are no consequences of being so open on stage open with his lies, the anthrax story. Yeah, he said, when my family received that package, and I don't know who sent it, and uh, I was with my daughter, he says, that was just a sobering wake-up call. And it was a complete fiction. didn't happen. Minaj passes off lying about his experiences in his comedy by justifying the fabrications as, quote, emotional truths. No, they're fiction. And what your emotional state is is kind of irrelevant to whether the stories are true or not. But never mind that. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was rejected going to the prom because of my race. A letter with white powder was sent to my apartment. Almost harmed my daughter. None of it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Makes it all up because, you know, it's Juicy Smollett syndrome. They want to be victims. But the supply and demand problem exists, and that is America's not a racist country, except you're a racist, Hassan Minaj, and your racist friends are racists and you go around indicting entire races of people, which is what racists do, for things that they did not do. But that's your Democrat Party. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Let's see. You know, I... um, It's uh, 13 minutes after there. Let's go to... uh, Let's go to a telephone call. I haven't gone to a telephone call. Talk to the nice people in a little while. Let's, uh, Let's talk to Anthony, calling from Delano, Florida... Anthony, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. Hey, Anthony. Hey, um, calling one because my wife is your probably biggest fan, and, and to the point of like jealousy on my part. Every Monday through Friday, nine to twelve, it's a good thing I'm at work. But <laughs> she is. Uh, <laughs> she she said our humors are about the same. I also Navy and I F14 guy, F18 guy, and um, so her birthday was last Thursday, and she goes, "I want you to call and talk to Chris about." anything navy flying anything <laughs> anything huh now you're saying you are a uh u.s navy fighter pilot f-14s and f-18s is that what you just said so re- retired yeah okay what's your call sign no i can't tell that on the radio okay that's fine <laughs> i was uh, when i flew an f-18 out of patuxent river in maryland i was given the call sign raker raker which is short for muckraker because I was a news guy at the time. So they said, oh, we got a muckraker in here. And they uh, gave me the call sign Raker, uh, which is just short for muckraker. But I don't want you to, you know, betray anything by giving. Did you have the same call sign uh, the whole time you are flying? I, I did. I, it went through a, um, a swing of uh, political correctness in the 90s. <laughs> um, and, and an animal came in and said, hey, you know, what's all about this call sign? And, and, and it, it's smut. And I said, hey sensitive bell under training he said all right that that's good so it, i almost lost it then but i kept it the uh the entire time after that that's all right the admiral thought it was smutty huh yeah yeah but you were able to explain to him that it was a, a dual purpose uh term correct correct yep very good very crafty 
Thanks, Maddie, too. Yeah. Very crafty. Now, uh, your wife's birthday was last weekend. She listens to our Humble Radio broadcast every day, and, and she has fun, and uh, she laughs about the uh, crazy world we live in. And, uh, and you shouldn't be envious. You're married to her. She's your loving wife. Uh, and she's smart and engaged and obviously has a great sense of humor. So these are all uh, great qualities, right? Oh, she's, yeah, she's the best. I mean, you know, 28 years in Navy and raising kids, running a business and smartest, intelligent, probably and most beautiful woman, you know, uh, I know. Yeah. Lucky every, every day. And I definitely out punted the coverage when I got married. That's great. That is, uh, that's great stuff. And have you, I don't think you've shared your wife's name. Uh, Joni. Joni. And Joni's yep. birthday was last week. Last Thursday, yeah. And, and she and, and Joni instructed you to call the show um, because you know you can you can share stuff and talk about your really cool life and uh, F14, Tom Cat, uh, Top Gun, all that great stuff. Moved into the F18, uh, and uh, uh, you know what a cool life. Uh, how many carriers did you serve on? I had uh, seven different p- deployments, and uh, a couple of them were back-to-back, so six different carriers plus, you know, some, some rag time and, and being out there on, on different ships. So a good, a good six, to, six to eight different ones. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. And yeah. now, is, yeah. is Joni there with you now? No, no, she's not. She, I'm, at, I'm at work, and, and she's uh, taking care of uh, everything at the house and She's got, you know, stuff in the day, two dogs and, and a lot of properties to take care of. So a lot of stuff on the property. Yeah. She's she's sink house. She is sink house. Sink, yeah. yep. Sink yeah. land house for yeah, sure. Yeah, sink land house. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Uh, uh, well, uh, God bless you. And uh, and Joni, too. And and happy birthday to uh, to Joni. I'm I'm sorry we didn't get uh, Joni's birthday on the on, uh, you know, on the birthday itself. But uh, Anthony, I think that uh, I think you've you've done your duty here, haven't you? Once again, I, I think so. Yep, I think these orders are complete. I can move on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> successfully uh, completed mission. Uh, once again, uh, ordinance exactly. delivered, and that is uh, that's great <laughs> stuff. Uh, Anthony, uh, wonderful stuff. I'm I'm saluting you. I'm doing a, a slow a slow salute. It's a perfect salute, and. Uh, and God bless you. And uh, I bet you miss flying airplanes, don't you? I, I do. We we actually have a small little one, and and I like to tell people she hasn't gone through a TSA checkpoint in ten years since we we bought it. It's her, her and the two dogs. If she wants to go somewhere, it's I salute her and let's go to the airport and we we take off. So wow, okay, yeah. that yeah. is great. Well, and you're so it's got to be a is is it a jet? No, 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 no. It's twin a, engine. A prop, uh, a Mooney, single engine Mooney. Okay, all right, uh, very yeah. cool. And you fly. That is uh, great. Well, uh, you know, you're already in Florida, so you can fly all kinds of places in your uh, in your Mooney, and that's uh, that's great stuff. Uh, well, God bless yep. you, and uh, happy birthday to Joni. You're uh, you're a great husband, and it's obvious that Joni is a great wife, and uh, and a brilliant, well informed woman with an excellent sense of humor. Yes, <laughs> she is to be married to me, definitely. <laughs> All great stuff. All right, my friend. Uh, great call. I thank you very much for uh, for calling in, and, and God bless you, and Joni too. Uh, many, many more happy years with your dogs and the kids and the plane and Sink House. You know, Sink House is the it's the commander in chief of the house, right? Sink House. It's a good old uh, military family term in uh, wide usage. Uh, Anthony, great, uh, great stuff. Thank you. Hey, you know, President Joe Biden's uh, diabolical plan to introduce the digital dollar in the United States is already nefariously underway. And it's very important to understand the potential consequences because, believe it or not, none of the consequences are good. And time is important. Uh, Time to get smart. Uh, Wise up on all this stuff to protect yourself and your financial future. So you can help protect your savings and your future from the risks of Joe Biden's digital dollar scheme by diversifying your money with IRAs in gold and silver. Call the experts in American Alternative Assets at 888-4-GOLD-20. That's 888-446-5320. You're going to get all the guidance you need on safeguarding your retirement savings. Say no to Joe Biden's 
Dingbat Digital Dollar. Call 888-4-GOLD-20, 888-446-5320. Individual results may vary. There is no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal tax investment and financial advice before opening an account. Yeah, yeah. See, there are great American families out there. Lots of them. Unfortunately, the left has secured information dominance, and they must be crushed. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Book by this July 31st for extra savings. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. Now, raise your hand if you remember Ray Epps. Ray Epps was um, a man, perhaps a clown of a man, who was inciting violence on the streets of Washington, D.C. on January 5th of 2021, inciting people to go into the Capitol, into the Capitol. You remember there's video because everybody's got a TV station in their pocket, and Video of Ray Epps, who is suspected of having been an FBI plant in the crowd to incite violence. And and, uh, Ray Epps sounded like this on the, I think it was about 14th Street in D.C. the night before January 6th. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. No. Fed, 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 that uh, Trump supporters were pointing at him and chanting, Fed, 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 accusing him of being a federal agent inciting violence there. And then the day of, that would be on January 6th, at the Capitol, on the west front of the Capitol, there was Ray Epps at the fence line that was being attacked, inciting more violence. Okay, The Capitol's this direction. And that's, I think there's one more clip from when he's down at the Capitol, too. But those are those are key Ray Epps moments. Well, uh, today, just uh, minutes ago, less than an hour ago, I believe, Ray Epps was charged by the Department of Justice with almost nothing, but they are busy um, trying to clean up their act, I think, because, you know, Hunter Biden... They came back and charged him with gun tr- crimes that they'll sweep under the rug later. And those are the only, uh, there'll be another plea deal. And those are the only charges that Hunter Biden is facing that don't lead right to Joe Biden. Don't lead right to Joe Biden. But Ray Epps has been charged with the most minor crimes they could find. And NBC News has this headline, Ray Epps, comma, subject of Tucker Carlson's January 6th conspiracy theories, comma, charged by DOJ. According to public records, Mr. Epps has not been charged with anything. No one's explained why a person videoed urging people to go to the Capitol, a person whose conduct was so suspect the crowd believed he was a Fed would magically disappear from the list of people the FBI was looking at. Senator Ted Cruz, January of last year of 2022. Now, so Ray Epps has been charged with disorderly conduct two years and eight months after the alleged offense and... What is the offense? Disorderly conduct. Ah, uh, that should get him 20 to 30 years at this point in prison, shouldn't it? Isn't that the deal? And I love NBC fake news, a uh, gang of fluffers. Ray Epps, comma, the subject of Tucker Carlson's January 6th conspiracy theories, comma, charged by DOJ. That's NBC News jumping in to do their part for the party. Uh, right there in the headline. I'm sorry, um, they're not Tucker Carlson's January 6th conspiracy theories. 
I just played the audio, uh, for which there is video, of Ray Epps being shouted down out on the street by people shouting, Fed, Fed, Fed. So I guess that's where Tucker Carlson's conspiracy theory began. Is that right, NBC? Fake news? Because you guys have your heads wedged so far up into your dark and remote locations. Honestly. So that's NBC fake news. Epps entered Capitol grounds on January 6th as supporter of former President Donald Trump. There's some question about that. He told the January 6th committee, really he's talking to the committee? Uh, Did Enrique Tarrio talk to the committee? That the conspiracy theories about him ruined his life. So we got that going for us at least. And there's a picture of Ray Epps. He's wearing a Trump hat and he's inciting people to go in. Why did it take two years and eight months to come up with the the mildest, slightest, least significant charge? Ray Epps, a January 6th participant, NBC News reports, whose removal from the FBI's Capital Violence webpage, first his photo was on there, and then it wasn't. Conspiracy theories. No, NBC News just spread this conspiracy theory, and it was true that Ray Epps had his face on the Capitol Violence webpage trying to find people who were inciting violence on and before January 6th, and then the FBI took his picture off of that website, and that sparked some curiosity on the part of people that are curious unlike Ryan J. Riley at NBC Fake News. Sure, Capital Violence webpage sparked conspiracy theories that he was a federal informant. Well, actually, uh, again, uh, Ryan J. Riley, I just played the audio, and there's video of people shouting him down as a Fed on January 5th, which is long before his picture disappeared from the FBI's Capital Violence webpage, was charged in connection with the Capitol attack on Tuesday. That's today. Epps is charged with one misdemeanor count, disorderly or disruptive uh, conduct, on restricted grounds. I think that'll get you 22 years in prison. Enrique Torrio was in Baltimore on January 6th. He didn't hit anybody. He didn't incite anybody. There is no video of him calling for people to storm the Capitol and go inside the Capitol, as there is with Ray Epps. He was charged by information, this is what NBC News is typing today, which which suggests that he plans to enter a plea deal. Oh, well, so he enters a plea deal for disorderly conduct, and there is no jail time, there is no fine, there is no nothing, and then it goes away, and that ought to take care of those conspiracy theorists. (laughs) The criminal information charges that Epps quote, did knowingly and with intent to impede and disrupt the orderly conduct of government business and official functions, engage in disorderly and disruptive conduct in and within such proximity to a restricted building and grounds that is any posted, cordoned off, or otherwise restricted area within the United States Capitol and its grounds, Who writes this stuff? You should go to prison. Whoever wrote this should do 30 to 40 years in prison. Where the vice president was and would be temporarily visiting, you know, the White House was attacked for days, forcing the evacuation of the president, and nobody got a day in jail. More than 180 federal law enforcement officers injured outside the White House by Democrats who showed up with explosive devices, pallets of frozen water bottles to throw at the police. All right, that's uh, the whole point. They were looting my city. They uh, attacked the the Reagan building just across the street from the White House. They set the Church of the Presidents on fire. Not a day in jail for anybody. It is good to be a violent criminal Democrat, isn't it? And Ray Epps is going to enter a plea deal for disorderly conduct. He was inciting violence very vocally. Most of the thousands who unlawfully gathered on the on the restricted grounds, really they unlawfully gathered at the Capitol? Have you looked at the First Amendment, the right to petition your government to peaceably assemble? And for those who assaulted police officers and broke windows, they should face the consequences for assaulting police officers, just as they should for 
injuring 180 officers at the White House and hundreds more across just the city of Washington. My neighborhood was looted twice. The neighborhood around this radio station was looted more than twice. The city was, there was arson, smashing storefronts, looting, attacking the police. Even on Inauguration Day, they burned at least one limousine that belonged to a poor Muslim immigrant to the United States and destroyed his business, but that's okay. They unlawfully gathered on restricted grounds. When did the Capitol grounds become restricted grounds? And did they become restricted retroactively? Most of the thousands who unlawfully gathered have not been charged unless they engaged in some sort of aggravating conduct. They write aggravating conduct. Like attacking police or destroying property. I don't think that's true. Video shows Epps' attempt to de-escalate tensions between police and rioters. I've not seen that video. Though he's also shown where there's hands on a giant Trump sign and rioters jammed into the police line. That's not really what he's... They're, they're leaving everything out here. See this? A federal judge acquitted another January 6th participant who had his hand on the same sign saying that his intent was unclear. Oh, okay. Epps is not charged with entering the Capitol, although he was enticing and encouraging people to do that the day before and the day of. He's only known to have been on the grounds on January 6th. NBC News reached out to lawyers representing Epps, who did not immediately respond to request for comment. Now, the news media takes it from here because that's the Democrat Party for you. Forbes magazine headline, Ray Epps charged with January 6th crime, hyphen, after conspiracy theory, claim he worked for FBI. Uh, and, And the news media, Forbes, NBC, fake news, they're ruling all of that out now based on Um, a plea deal for a disorderly conduct charge that was filed two years and eight months later. Sure. And he will walk. And uh, no no problem. uh, This is pretty amazing. Another headline, Ray Epps says he'll be charged for January 6th, further dampening Fox News conspiracy theory. They love the whole conspiracy theory thing. They don't follow the news. They don't look at the video. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Latest headline 12 minutes ago, pro-Trump protester Ray Epps, focus of January 6th conspiracy theory, charged with disorderly conduct, not inciting a riot, uh, disorderly conduct, and uh, explain why he was on the FBI most wanted uh, uh, picture list, and then it, it, his picture vanished. Explain that. And why it took two years and eight months to get around to charging him with littering. Just extraordinary. You're a Democrat party. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm telling you. Now, Chris, I just have a question. If you went uh, the day before January 6th, you're on video saying, let's go to the Capitol. Mm-hmm. On January 6th. Into the Capitol. Into yep. the ca- inside. He yeah, did yeah, say inside. Right, yeah. And then on January 6th, you're at the Trump rally pointing people towards the Capitol, showing them where it is. You're on the steps of the Capitol on January 6th. You send the text message that says, I orchestrated it. And you get uh, disorderly conduct? Two years and eight months later, and a, and a plea deal is already apparently in the offing here, according to NBC Fake News, who uh, uh, continue to be unaware of what Ray Epps actually did, what his involvement was. And then he tweeted, I orchestrated this, and that's not in any of the news reporting today. And uh, plea deal disorderly. Don't worry about Ray Epps. He's a Trump supporter. See, there's no conspiracy here. You're a Democrat party. Isn't that amazing? All right, let's go to uh, let's go to some audio here. That is a that is a development, and honestly, it's is it part of the ongoing cover up? Because that is not even a slap on the wrist; it's kind of a kiss on the hand, isn't it? And why did it take two years and eight months? NBC News is not interested in the answer to that question. Just extraordinary. Ah, uh, yeah. Sent a text saying he orchestrated it. 
He told us that's when he sent this text to his nephew. Conspiracists saw it as the true confession of an agent provocateur. Conspiracists. I was in front with a few others. I also orchestrated it. Explain this to me. I was boasting to my nephew. I helped get people there. I, I was directing people to the Capitol that morning. You know how this sounds. I know exactly how it sounds. I've been... 60 minutes. Scolded by my wife for using that word. I shouldn't have used that word. Smoothing it over, 60 minutes, smoothing it over. It is good to be a Democrat, isn't it? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, And they gave parole to Sirhan Sirhan, but that's another thing. Um, All right, let's go to the dim-witted John Fetterman, the uh, disgraceful and embarrassing Democrat senator from the Keystone State. Pennsylvania, people talk politics, they always do that. The Dairy State. The Keystone State, <laughs> the looting state. California, the looting and arson state. Uh, here's uh, Senator John Fetterman. He was on MSDNC, and um, he is he's really hostile. And I think they've changed the dress code for Fetterman. Uh, they may not be done yet. Truly, I was I was very proud of my colleagues, you know, because they're really about governance. That's what it is. And on the other, the, the House, the, the whatever they call themselves, T- Team America or whatever they call themselves, <laughs> I just like, hey, I just like bring your vote. You know, otherwise, you know, they need to go hump a different leg. Now they're going to have to change the speech code and lower our standards just a little bit for the hump a different leg senator from uh, he looks like a leg humper doesn't he i think he's uh, it's because they're about governance that's what they're about yeah all evidence to the contrary amazing mm, 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 mm. yeah because they changed the dress code for this this loserman boy oh boy i'm telling you now uh, also we're waiting for a government shutdown you know there's a government shutdown looming uh, and I love a good government shutdown. As a longtime Washington, D.C. resident, less traffic, uh, you know, restaurants are easier. Everything's better during a government shutdown, I've got to say. And Congressman Matt Rosendale was on the Fox News Channel early this morning explaining why he is not going to vote for Kevin McCarthy's continuing resolution, which will keep the government operating for 30 days or so while they get back to the negotiating table and try to figure out what's going on. But Matt Rosendale has had enough of this stuff, this kicking the can down the road a month at a time. And he says, this is just Nancy Pelosi uh, in pants. I've said for months now that I will not support any continuing resolution. Uh, That is merely an extension of Nancy Pelosi's spending and Joe Biden's policies that we voted against. Republicans voted against for the last two years. We have known for nine months it is time to pass the appropriation bills. We were assured by Kevin McCarthy, this Congress is going to be different. We're going to pass the 12 appropriation bills. I started talking about this several months ago when the debt ceiling package was negotiated outside of the House of Representatives and Kevin McCarthy went directly to President Biden and struck a deal that didn't reduce spending. I said, we are on a trajectory to have a continuing resolution and an omnibus, the same as Nancy Pelosi passes. Same as Nancy, there's another omnibus, the kitchen sink, everything. Oh, you're not going to get funding for the military if you don't vote for death gel in gay school, you know. Uh, And that's uh, how this sleazy town always screws everything up. Congressman Chip Roy is supporting the temporary omnibus bill to give him 30 some odd days to talk more. And I have colleagues on my side of the aisle who are about to walk away from something that we can possibly do here together to get across and send a message loudly and clearly that we should fund a government that will actually do its job and secure the border. For all the folks out there ready to walk away from it, I would just caution you that you are walking away from the most important issue that we are dealing with right now for the people that we represent. Well, you know, on the one hand, and then on the other hand, Washington. The front page of the Washington Post today, above the fold, has the headline, Worry Over Biden's Age Grips Some Democrats. They don't care about it until it grips some Democrats. You know how Democrats, when they grip some Democrats, you know where they usually grip them by? You know where they... Poll shows voters are increasingly anxious about president's energy. Yeah, that's uh, 
And I love this headline, too, their lead story. Swap by Iran and U.S. freeze 10. Well, freeze five hostages and five espionage criminals stealing nuclear and ballistic missile secrets from the United States so that the Islamic revolution can kill us all. So I guess 10 were freed. Yeah, technically speaking. What a rag this paper is. And I just mentioned the Washington Post front page piece. They, um, the headline is, Worry over Biden's age grips some Democrats. Polls show voters are increasingly anxious, anxious about president's energy. And uh, amazingly, the third paragraph, they quote a, uh, a Democrat Party operative from Ohio named Sharon Sweda. Sharon Sweda is the leader of the Democratic Party in Lorain County, Ohio. And she said of Joe Biden, this is the quote on the front page of the Post, he's in a period of his life where passing and death are imminent. <laughs> he said, this is, hey, Sharon, Sharon Sweda of the Democrat Party, she's the leader, Democrat Party in Lorain County, Ohio. He's in a period of his life where passing and death are imminent. May not be the best use of the word imminent. We're all on a ticking clock, she said. (laughs) But when you're at his age, or Trump's age, she throws in for good measure, that clock is ticking a little faster. And that's a concern for voters. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Is that a period in his life where passing and death is imminent? Well, first of all, passing and death are Redundant, but two things, and it should be are imminent, uh, passing and death, uh, imminent, imminent. It's imminent. That's that's your Democrat Party. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I'm telling you. Also, Joe Biden at the United Nations today has given away the store because he wants to transfer all of our wealth and money to beephole countries that reject free market capitalism and therefore live in squalor. And so in order to destroy the world, you bankrupt us by propping up them. And, uh, you know, then everybody loses. And that's the, the plan that the left has for the world. And the left is in charge of the Democrat Party. But keep in mind that Joe Biden is in a period of his life where passing and death is imminent. It's imminent. It's happening sometime real soon. That's uh, according to the head of the Democrat Party in Lorain County, Ohio. Uh, this is not my opinion. I'm just just reading the papers here. Just reading the papers. 